Uh, ah, this is an underwater okay. world. Hold on, let me. Wow. Underwater world. <laughs> I saw the is... movement next to my water scene. <laughs> okay. So, so the idea on? is we can't see this red cube when it's behind the trees. All right, hold on. Okay, right, yeah. And we want an effect like this when it's behind the trees. Yes, that sounds nice to me. Yes. Okay, so we, um, you want to like add or multiply or something based on if there's something behind it, right? Uh, kinda, yeah. Right. Or show another texture. Okay, that sounds uh, cool. Yeah, well, like I'm using a color here, but we c we could use a texture here as well. Right. So uh, for that we need uh, the scene texture. So what the camera renders here is actually written into a texture. Okay. Yeah. So we get get one of that texture here, like it's called scene depth, uh, and. So there's a there's something called buffer visualization here, and you can actually see the scene depth texture here. Oh, lovely. Okay, okay. I'm trying not to look at the distance, cause, and I know that uh, uh, locker yeah. in chat will start tripping out. But um... <laughs> yeah, okay, so it's the bar. what? How are we how are we getting the numbers here? Is it based on each mesh? How far the how close it is to the the distance? So it's like per yes, mesh. Yes, the camera. Mm-hmm. Not uh, per per vertex, actually. Okay. Right. So per face. This also has that a, is this, yeah. Right, this, uh, this also has a gradient inside it, inside the mesh. Okay. And when you get close, the values change, as you can see. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. So one is okay. further away, it's similar to the distance thing that we were using, right? Yeah. It probably uses yes. this thing, right? And there's something something else called custom death and okay it only shows up when you go and i, I search for mesh but i shouldn't uh, i should have searched for custom uh, so there's something called render custom death pass uh, and by default it's off okay and as you can see the effect oh, it's uh... enabled once i enable it okay so once you see it we can see through it right okay so you need so, that yes uh, so once we check this, uh, we say that this will have its own pass um, yeah. in the re render phase. Okay. And w when we go to custom depth, we can see it's rendering separately. Right? Okay. Yeah. So only that material has a custom depth uh, pass. Yes. And then uh, you have uh, a possibility of. 256 uh, stencil values to uh, ch check in here. Okay. So you can have two different object types or 256 different object types um, rendering diff uh, separately. Uh, I, I, like, I, can, I know what you mean by the stencil, but if something in front of it, but are we given like a priority order? Is that what you mean? Like in terms of what should be in front of what? Yeah, yes, yes. Okay. And how do you reference these other objects? Is it just everything else has a default of zero and you give it something or? Yeah, I don't know how you reference them. It just uh, takes the custom depth here uh, because uh, it combines them. I, I guess that's how it does, but probably using uh, another parameter, we can filter them out. Okay. Uh, we don't need that here. So, uh, here we have the custom depth and we have the scene depth. Uh, what we need to subtract them to like uh, get uh, what we need. Uh, what what do you think we will get when we subtract them? Well, I'm trying to look at uh, the custom depth is the the one you were just showing me, right? And the scene depth is a value between zero and one, mm -hmm. right? So um, I guess if it hasn't been set, it'd be zero. So zero, it would it be minus? Uh, no, imagine. Uh, Scene depth has the object rendered as well, right? Oh, right. So, hang on. Is it like a zero to one though, or is it an actual? So, what? What? 
Yeah, so what do you mean by seeing depth as the object rendered as well? I'm, I'm imagining seeing depth as being that view where things are grayscale. Yes. Based on distance from camera, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. we're, we're just taking out that value uh, for a particular pixel. Um, and we're subtracting that away from what the custom depth would be. Also, this this confused me a little bit because it's it's using only the <laughs> uh, red values. Right, I get it tends to if it's grayscale, right? Because it's just yeah, it needs a grayscale well, but I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess I, for me here, I don't know what the custom depth is giving out. I guess that is that just going to be a bunch of like zero, like what values are we getting out of that? Uh, we're masking out our. Uh, object out of the scene depth. So is it just zero or one based on whether or not? Yes, it yes, it's see? zero. Yes, yes, it's between zero and one. But not, is it literally no, zero? No, no, zero one? or one. Yes, literally yeah. zero yeah. or one. Yeah. Sorry. So it's basically, uh, are we obstructed, uh, obstructed or not? Yes. Right. Uh, no. Sorry. <laughs> no. Uh, then we do if to see uh, if that's correct or not, because like uh, we are passing in the subtraction, the output of this uh, to A, and we have zero on B. So we're checking okay. if we're yeah. greater than zero or not. Then yeah. we understand what's going on. And this is our final mask. OK. Uh, right. Um... Why do we need the depth one? If uh, not the custom depth one, the scene depth one. The scene depth seems to be like the, the the colors only seem relative to the same meshes, right? Not like other objects. Uh, take care, Fido, and other people in chat. I will reply to people. Uh, I just want to. While well, Brain is explaining something, I, it's best that we try and get through it rather than us try and stop him. So every so often. I will respond to everything in chat. Uh, by the way, remember that this is a post-process uh, material. Okay. okay so let's... we're not assigning the material to this one. The camera has the effect. Okay. <laughs> so that changed a little bit, I guess. Uh, so we need to know about uh, the whole depth because uh, it's hard to explain. <laughs> like, I would understand if that, that picture gave us a zero, the grayscale one gave us a zero and one based on all objects, how close mm -hmm. they are to the camera, because then you can, you can work out which one is closer based on the, the value, uh, purely mm -hmm. saying, well, this one is further away. It's like a Z index, right? But yes. from, from seeing that picture you showed me earlier, that didn't seem to reflect it. The zero, the, gr the gray mm -hmm. thing you showed earlier. This one. Yes. Because. Oh, actually, maybe it does. It is grayscale, right? No, yeah, but if you come back a just a little bit, see how the grass behind the trees is brighter than the trees, and the grass in front of the trees is brighter than the trees. Or is it just because the camera angle that? Try uh, I guess. And okay. we have blacks uh, everywhere. How, how, <laughs> if you just look straight down at it for me. If you go bang above it. Okay. Yeah. No, um, yeah, it does work. Uh, sorry, I think the angle threw me off before. I mm -hmm. thought that the distance was relative to each. Like each object had a zero to one value. Mm -hmm. But it's not. It's uh, Sorry, as in it was relative to that object only, I thought. I misunderstood. That makes mm -hmm. more sense. I'm down with that. Okay, great, because there will be some uh, nodes that we will not understand <laughs> totally, probably. Um, and this bit makes sense too, I guess, uh, the if, because yeah, we I'll... have a grayscale, well, we need one or zero. It's, yeah, it's turning it into a mask at that point, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, I'm just, again, what's the custom depth? How's that? I don't. I still don't know what we're getting out of that. Uh, custom depth, we, we only get the, the object we enabled the custom depth 
feature. Ah, right. Okay, so it's only right. I can't see anything right now because yeah, yeah. I disabled it. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where is it? Where's my <laughs> object? Okay. Uh, is this? Yeah. Uh, no, not this the one. other one. The other one. <laughs> okay. So, you, and okay. you can give it a sensor value. Okay. So, can that can it potentially have values of one to two five five in that RGB? Yeah. Okay. That's that's fine. So then you can okay. do some maths in order to work out which layer it is if you need to, if you have multiple, for example. Yeah, right uh, now we're we're uh, taking all of the values. We're yeah. just taking the custom depth. Yeah. Okay. So overall, that'll be definitely. one. Yeah, and one for that, uh, wherever that <coughs> rectangle is, that shape is, that cube what, that you've stretched. And then we'll take the depth of it, and then we work out, okay, so anything that is that cube, which is a one, and that the scene depth is... <laughs> it's confusing, a little bit, yeah. We just take away the scene depth, but how do we choose zero as our value there? Uh, you mean this one? Yeah. Uh, no, uh, on the right. Yeah, right side. Yeah. Right side. Uh, sorry, where you are now. Your mouse doesn't show up on the screen. That's why, <laughs> okay. That's why it's okay. Hard. I can see where you're highlighting, but not like the no. actual mouse. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna do this. So if I change this to 0.5, okay. Mm -hmm. Um. You'll see without this, without being behind any object, it gets the color. Oh, is it still got a bit of that yellow and uh, around the edges? Yeah, it? because because I have the 0.5 alpha uh, in the hmm, node somewhere <laughs> here. Right. Uh, by default, it was zero, but I changed it to 0.5. Uh, so it replaces the those ones with with this one so we, we want it to be zero not 0 0.5 we don't want it to draw that uh color when when it's not obstructed okay so it works now but it makes sense with the other nodes it makes sense and uh, doesn't oh, make no, sense at I the think, same time i think it gets because we only care about the ones which are zero no uh, on that, on that abstract, if you go back to the graph, yeah. So the the ones coming in from the uh c the, the custom depth, we only care about the zeros because the zeros are the ones where we can't see our object, yeah. right? And then mm -hmm. we're taking away the distance from that, but uh, which means it, which is at max going to be one, so it would yes. only be below zero if it's abstracted. Uh, abstr yeah. Okay. Fine. Good. Okay. Uh, so move on before get, I forget again. Yeah, see, things <laughs> get weird here. Uh, we have a huge number here. Uh, Good. One million or something by default uh, to uh, make it work in a greater range. Okay. Okay. Um, then we combine it with our uh, custom depth. <laughs> this is weird. So okay, we add it. Um, I'll return back to this one later. Uh, in a so second. one million and one, or one million and zero. <laughs> we're getting out of that. Yes, and then we divide it by the range. Uh, no, by by this one. Oh, okay. So, so it's e okay, either zero or one. Yes, we get it. Uh, we clamp clamp it somehow uh, between <laughs> zero and one. Okay. And then. Uh, he was doing a multiplication here, multiplying by two, then flooring it, and then uh, attaching it here. But I got rid of them and it still works. Okay. So after doing this, then we uh, combine it with our uh, mask, right? Well, we multiply. We're basically saying, do, is it? A, do we treat it as a mask or not? It seems there, right? We're kind of yeah, I guess because we already got a mask out of it. It seems, and then we're just mm -hmm. basically saying, uh, then we say uh, it should also work in this range, but oh, uh, uh, so if it's mm. above, 
Yeah, I guess it would. Okay, it's a way of yeah saying when we should cancel it. I think that all yes. of that is is because then it would change it all to say it's not a mask. We don't need to do any of this extra rendering. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We're in a good place. <laughs> and then we, we just take into statement. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. But this is the important part, actually. This is this is the, the magic hap where the magic happens. Okay. And the rest is just coloring and uh, taking an alpha in here. The alpha is how how much of the the color that we're putting in is it? Yes. Okay. So when we multiply this value with our alpha, it gets everything down by 0.5. Yeah, it halves it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, so here, this is also important. Since we, we are, um, we have a post-process uh, material here, shader, rather. Uh, let's just do this first. Um, what this will do is just get this uh, screen texture and render it. Nothing fancy here. Uh, but what if we multiply it um, by 0.5, for example? What do you think it will happen? I didn't get what the first one did. To be honest, it didn't seem to do anything. Uh, well, we're, we're taking the color of the texture. The scene texture, texture, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And multiplying it by 0.5. Oh, right. Uh, should everything so it gets darker. get darker, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or <laughs> just to have Nighttime fun with effect. it. Uh, this is the easiest uh, post-processing effect, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, world bloom. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, so. Let's get rid okay, of that. sorry, I see your uh, point. What you're saying is that thing is just telling us what we're getting uh, from the camera and we're able to manipulate it then. Okay. So we're getting yeah, the so, RGB values from it. Mm -hmm. And, and lurping between these values using the... Uh, Isn't it just zero ones that come through, though? What? Yeah, from that multiplier from that's coming out, the multiplier mm -hmm. going up. Isn't that just going to be zero or one? No. Yes. So what the Isn't lerp? It what we need here? It, oh yeah, it's either yeah. You're right. I just find the lerp. It's more of like a switch. Lerp. I always think of going from one to the other. Mm -hmm. Like, um, linearly, you know, rather than a a, a step. Yes. But uh, this is acting like a step or a, a switch in this case, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. I understood. It's good that I asked because it means. I mean, I'm fine. And I'm done. <laughs> yeah. This is it. That's interesting. I'm. I'd like to do that one as well. And um, it was something like this. Super easy brain. So divide, multiply by two, floor, <laughs> then multiply again. Oh, I can't uh, see I your know. screen, by the way, if you're showing it. Ah, uh, sorry. Yeah. It's okay. Uh, Alright, okay, that's sh it. Share a screenshot in chat if you want of the original mode, but... Um... No. <laughs> no. No, I do not want. Okay, let's let's go back to Waters. Well, no, I think while that's fresh, I'm going to quickly do it. Okay. Uh, just because I'd like to... We can add to one of these. I can put a circle behind these and add that material to it. So um, I'm going to quickly add a sphere in back here. And uh, let's move this. Okay, excellent. And then we want to uh, apply a texture to this. So we're just going to make a new texture, quick material. Let's call it that. Um, oh, hmm. actually, does it need the material? Do you just have to click? That I with? forgot to explain something else. Uh, how to um, add the custom post-processing thing. But oh yeah. I'll okay. do that later on your screen. Okay, sweet, sweet. Um, so do we need a custom material for this then? Is it on the material you tick that it's um, it has that whatever it was called custom? No, no, you you do it in in the the graph. The. In the uh, you mean in in the in the 
Okay, uh, I, I was need watching to... the stream. Yeah, sorry. Do I need to put a material on uh, this? On, on the object, no. No, okay. But I'm you making have... a material for the post-processing, am I? Yes. Okay, that's fine. Let's uh, delete that. Let's click on here. So first step is we go is something called custom depth, I think it was. It's render custom depth pass. That's fine. We're going to save that for now. That has that on it. Then Perfect. we're going to make a material, which is going to be our... It's going to be highlight through walls. Let's just call it that. Then I'm going to this. And this is where everything goes. And this is just going to be outputting... Was it an emissive color you had? Yes, so you need to change the surface to Prosperous. Ah, noise. Okay, so we, we change that, and then we have the whole thing to do. So, right, let me try and remember. Um, one was the custom... Scene texture. So, look at what options you ah. have in scene texture. Ah. Plenty. Okay. So one was our custom and one was our. So hang on, was the custom one first? In here. Custom stencil? Custom. No. Depth. I love how Depth. it's alphabetic out of order. It really helps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, and then we have a scene. So it's scene just texture. random in our values, probably. Yeah. So a scene texture is something to remember from here is our way of getting what the camera is seeing. If we were to turn what the camera sees into a texture, because I remember you used to talk about that when you were talking about Unity stuff before, but yes. I'd never, I'd never played with it to really understand like manipulating it. So it's it's interesting to me, interesting for me to see. Okay, so <laughs> this is going to be our hold on. The second one. Scene depth there. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so we initially had. Uh, oh, we need to get the uh one value out of this because this is a three right i think we had a mask with just the r mm -hmm. what do these hello wormy it's good to see you oh i said i'd copy uh rechat i'm sure people have gone but i'm gonna read it anyway um i did mention it loku because you needed to see the trippy stuff <laughs> no one's here what? Uh, no, um, you should be able to hear me now. Uh, if anyone's listening in chat, can you say pineapples, please? Thank you. Um, okay, oh, Fido went. We said goodbye to Fido. Uh, obey the law. If you're still in chat, let me know, and I'll explain to you. Mark, as well, uh, we did have a break. I stopped for two hours, or an hour and a half, and then I came back. We did a four-hour session on Skyrim, and then we're three or two and a half hours into this dev session now as well. Ah, people are here. Look at everyone alive. Who broke the rules? Apollyon. Apollyon, we caught you. You broke the rules. But yeah, so we, we're kind of still going, but I have had a break where I popped to the shop and I made some food. After three years of streaming, we're still being happy that people can hear us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the microphone works. Um, and obey the law. So you want to know what we're up to? Yeah, yeah, okay, so we're in a game, I'll do this quite quickly, we're in a game engine called Unreal. Uh, I don't know, you, you're completely new to game dev, so game engines are uh, like a custom piece of software made where you can, s it gives you a way to like set up a scene with a bunch of objects, um, and then you can write behaviors for how they should behave. Uh, so normally, you know, let's say you want it, so when you press the, the R button on your keyboard, this block will get fired into the air. You can attach a little script that says, hey, this actor here, this block that I put in, uh, get a hold of it. And if the whenever the person presses R, I want to apply some velocity upwards onto it. And it'll do that. Uh, you set up a bunch of rules and it, it listens for inputs, it reacts to them, things like that. So what we're doing, every Sunday I do a, a, like a new learning kind of stream where each month I choose a new topic and we're looking at materials and shaders this month. I tend to choose topics I haven't played uh, played with before. I'm an engineer, so I do code. Um, whereas we're now doing like in-engine stuff. This is more like artists, designers, or kind of jack of all trade game developers stuff. Uh, so materials uh, and shaders is just the word for like getting logic into your materials. But materials are kind of like 
you apply a material to any uh, graphical, think of a 3D model. It, it, you can apply it to other things as well, but let's just say like a 3D model like this block. And the material describes how it should look when the camera sees it based on the light that's coming onto it, the, how far away it is, um, the shadow information and stuff like that as well. So you can apply like textures as part of that material. You can say that it should have this like brick texture and then you can you can do things to make it look like it's a bit more 3D than it is um, using things like normal maps and that. So what we're doing today, the first thing we're trying to do is trying to make uh, some watery based textures uh, or uh, materials, sorry. So where's my little world over here? <laughs> so all this is is just a flat plane. Uh, I'm going to show you from the side. It's just a, a piece of, they call it a plane. If it's not 3D, it's just two dimensionals. It's like one side of a square. So we've got one of those. And I've just applied a material to it, which is just blue. But then what you can do within a material is you can set up special rules where you can say like, hey, if you're intersecting with another object, I want you to do a different color. And based on how far away you are, I want you to blend between one color and the middle color, if that makes sense. Um, and then we did this one as a little bit more advanced. So this one's transparent. We've got some like refraction going on where it's a bit wobbly, like you do get in water. Instead of just a solid blend, we've got this kind of moving random noise thing going around the edge, which looks a bit like fire, but don't worry about it. It's fine. Um, and that we can have it, we can join different pieces together. You see, this is just another plane. I, I think it might be a little higher than it needs to be, actually. Actually, no, I think it is in line with it. It's just because it's transparent. It looks crap when they overlap. But um, you can see that there's, there are two separate materials there, but they join up nicely here. So that's something else we looked at. Uh, and we're going to do one more water type, more like the Wind Waker kind of water. I can show you a little screenshot of what we'd, I, I want to have a look at before the end of stream. Water that looks like that. So that cartoony kind of cell shaded Brainoid's done one already as well. So we, we're going to have a little look at that. But um, you can also do stuff to actually make this surface move. So even though it's just a flat surface, you can tell it just using a material. We don't have to like go and do custom animations and that. We can tell it to like make certain parts of it go up and down. Or rather make it like look like it's moving. Yes, it's sorry, that's correct. That's correct. We, we tell because it you can, you can actually make it move as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's fair. So hopefully... That gives you a bit of a, an overview. Detection of the fact how to interact with the world. The jelly block with brick box falling off a ledge. Um, no, you you can textures won't, but you can make a material. You can the material can have physical properties to it as well, which will impact like the you have uh, like the friction kind of values to it and things like that as well. So a material can include that sort of information, but that is not something we're looking at at the moment. It tends to be a physical a physics material. Um, to hold that sort of information. But right, and what we're doing right now then is we're going to try and make a special rule because all you're doing is basically telling the camera, which is what I'm controlling now as we look around, when it intersects with this tiny pixel here, zoom in on it, like let's just there, what should it show? And normally it just, if you just give this a texture like we've got here, it'll just show, oh, well, that texture on that position on the square should be this kind of brownie color. So show that. But what we can do, we can do some extra stuff and say, well, Actually, if there's look through the whole scene and if there's an object behind it, then actually I want to change this color to be a different color. And so we can make we can make it so we can see that circle through this. And that's interesting <laughs> and confusing at the see. same time. So that's what we're trying to do at the moment. And this is doing a post processing event. So instead of applying a, t a material or uh, yeah, a material to this object, what we're doing is we're, this is going to be applied as a post-process material, which is like, if you imagine each one of these has their own kind of texture, like what what should what kind of color pixel should show at different parts of this square. A post-processing -proce texture is like uh, the whole screen. If you think of this camera as a screenshot and each pixel is a different color, yeah. we're, we're able to manipulate those colors directly. So it doesn't matter what object it is. It's just at position 600 pixels across, 400 pixels down, what color should be there, regardless of what object is there. Uh, and we will use the uh, depth buffer. Um, yes. So the depth buffer, is, how did you see that view, Brian, earlier that uh, you were showing? Lit. Hmm? Uh, in instead of lit, uh, you, you press the next to perspective. Uh, oh, and... right. Yes, sorry. 
in so here. So buffer buffer visualization. Oh yeah. Uh, custom depth. So yeah, we have custom depth and scene depth. Or you can also check other ones. Okay. Fun. So custom depth is we on this one object we've applied something called custom depth to it. Um and so that means that in this view the all the camera knows to see is that one object that has it specified. Uh so we can change this to different things. So there's a scene depth as well, was it? Uh scene depth world units? That's different, but still uh let's check that. <laughs> okay, so scene depth is things are different it's the darker the closer you are to it and they're whiter the further away you are you have this trippy background don't worry about that <laughs> um <laughs> for loku again is tripping <laughs> every time he's like no uh so this allows you to see what is further away from other things so the here the game you can use this information and you can basically you can ask the camera hey give me this map and then you can say when i'm rendering stuff is the you can use the color of this, the gray, the, the white to black kind of value that you can get from this uh, to determine is this closer than this and that sort of information. Um, ooh, okay. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, what could be interesting ooh, there? World units, that's just everything's why I'm guessing the world units is large at the moment or something. Mm, yeah. Uh, what about that? Check Ooh, metallic. Or metallic. Oh, I don't have any metallic actually. Sorry. That's a bad example. No, 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 no. I chose metallic. Uh, then. You probably have speculars. Roughness I will have. Yeah. Yeah. So each, ma each material for these objects, we gave it a map to say which bits should be rough or not. So here, so you could you could use the roughness uh, buffer to have an effect, extra effect on uh, rougher or, or metallic objects. Yeah, that's cool. So you can like you can make shiny stuff all kind of yeah. go yeah like appear dark all of a sudden, to, which would be an interesting and weird kind of effect to have, I guess. But instead of doing it on all objects, you're just doing it on whatever the camera sees. So it's like a, or an override. Have distortion on uh, rougher objects, for example, or, or the opposite. You thought the two on the end? Yeah, so these do have a lot of roughness. White means really rough. And black means not very rough. So the edges of these bricks are rough. You don't have the stupid. It's just, it, it's, not, it's not super logical, dude, so don't stress. Uh, okay, let's go back to lit. And then let's actually carry on with this. So we made a, we're taking out these values and we needed to then, this is <laughs> basically giving us a custom depth. So we can tell certain objects to have a custom scene depth, I think it was called. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so this is one or zero based on that or maybe it's one to two five five i'm not too sure uh i'm not, not sure. one or zero but it wasn't it grayscale it was that's what made me think is that how it yeah i don't know it should be grayscale it's not one or zero but it's solid per object right no it, it's just one to zero, zero to one yeah Uh, they will show, say, zero to one value based on the, what was the name of that setting? Um, where is Alex? Based on the, what? <laughs> this thing. Ah, oh, Stencil depth? value, I think it would oh. be. I'm guessing that's what implements it, it, uh, it, it influences it. I'm going to guess that. I'm going to write it down. Okay. <laughs> Perhaps. We could check if we were looking at that grab, couldn't we? But we're not going to. Yeah. Okay. So we have that. And then we have our scene depth, which is just uh, 0 to 1 based on distance from camera. Okay. And we subtract <laughs> the bits that do have the special filter on. We want to take away from them their custom depth at the moment. 
K. And this, uh, with the custom death, it's uh, one is far away and black is close. Is that right? Or is it the other yes. way around? Yeah, I guess it was like that. Well, we can reverse engineer it and find the answer. Yeah, or just switch it on quickly based on the values. Uh, what was it? Seen that. Thank you. Yeah, white is further away, black is close up. Okay, good. So uh, if the distance is bigger, uh, you have a greater value. Yes, correct, correct. So that means that we're only going to subtract something, or we're going to subtract more based on how far away it is. If it's close, we don't need to. All right. Okay. <laughs> um, and then we had some, there's an if statement down here. <laughs> yes. And we went to, uh, zero was the thing we were checking. I remember that. Mm -hmm. uh, if it was anything less than zero, we cared. And then if it, oh, we're outputting a mask value, right? So one of them is one here as well. So let's change this to one. Ah, one. Yep, yep. Ah. But you're also checking with zero. Uh, you didn't pass in a zero oh. to B. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's, sorry, you were right. So this needs to go up there. We're basically saying, is the value that we've got now, if it's I'm just wondering how this, how this uses the Is that grayscale color it takes? Maybe the distance or something? Yeah, it is distance. This, this one, I mean. Sorry, the, <clears throat> on the custom one. You know, the where it just stays one. Right. Because that's how it figures out whether or not what mm -hmm. it's looking at is before it, right? is closer to it, right? Yeah. Mm, let's, uh, let me look at this just for a sec. This should be darker the closer we get. Yes. Okay. And that would be comparable to whatever's in front of it then in that other mode. Okay. That makes a little more sense now. So it's not zero. Right. I misunderstood. That stencil thing was completely wrong, what I said then. Well, stencil comes in at some point, but where I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> On the distance from camera. Okay. Cool. Nice. Um, so we want to know which bits uh, are less than, hold on, no, no, closer is, yeah, yeah, which are less than the this value. Now, out of the bits that should be shown on this special material, which are one, no, which are going to be the distance color, let's say it's 0.6 away. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, we want to know anything that is less than 0.6 away because we no longer want to draw it in the same way. So we want to do a mask where it outputs one wherever this value is less than that value. So we're subtracting it. Uh, 0 0.6 minus 0 0.6 with 0. 0.6 minus 0 0.4 would give you. So anything that's more than 0, we want a, a 1 coming out of. True. Ta-da! Look. <laughs> You can't rush the maths. Okay. Uh, then. <laughs> uh, move those, move all the nodes a little left. Or... Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, so. I, I think we should uh, get back to the scene textures range. Uh, I mean, custom depths range. Huh? Go back so to this. Get, 
No, no, no. Oh. So we, we take out the red value and um, add it to the add it to a range custom range value. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay, we did. So it was an add. This thing I found really weird though. Yeah. So this this is just a, a parameter that you called range, or is range just? No, no. I just yeah. It's a custom parameter. So like the max distance to show sort of thing, is it? Yeah. We can play with that value then outside. So let's just set this to be maybe not as high as you did. Let's just set it as a thousand for now. A uh, thousand didn't work for me. I tried it. at least get a ten thousand maybe. Hundred thousand, that's uh, fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and and maybe swap the switches of add because we're gonna divide the top one. It would look better. I know you you'd wanna do that, but. but uh, I, I, take that. Take. <laughs> Add it doesn't matter what order. But oh, now it's it will look proper. Yeah. Okay, so we get the result of that, and then we want to divide by. <laughs> uh, no. Like that? Yes. That? Yeah. Okay, this I need to try and like. Okay, no, no. no so, no. okay, so we're adding. A zero to one value to ten thousand, <laughs> <laughs> and then we're dividing it, and we get a quite small number: ten thousand point six. <laughs> no, ten thousand divided by ten thousand. Say, oh, I've messed this up now. Ten thousand. Divide by 10,000.6 gives you nice. a value like this. Okay, so it basically will... What does this matter? What number it is? <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't make sense. I don't understand. We're basically just getting a value very close to 1. 10,000 divided by 10,000 is 1, and 10,000 divided by 10,000 and 1 is it's just a... May maybe we understand it wrong. Maybe that red value returns something bigger. <laughs> maybe it's a distance it gives. Yeah. That would make sense. And here we take the maybe forward distance somehow with red. Uh, yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Wonder what it that that way it makes sense more. Okay, so this might be it may not be a zero to one value. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it might actually output distance or something. <laughs> but but the but the buffer visualization de definitely gives out a, a yeah zero to one value, so that confuses us a little bit. But, Indeed. But here really? it doesn't probably. That's fine. Well, this would make more sense, basically. It's, so this is, why don't we just have a less than? Like, less than? Like, if this is less than that. No, that's I don't know. equivalent of it, right? Uh, pro probably having a hmm, if is more costly. If we... Uh, uh, past our distance uh, cap. Okay, then this, what happened after that? So so we, oh yeah, because between the, zero and one, and then... Yeah, multi, because that's how we can cancel it, right? Multiply is yes. our way to cancel stuff. Um, and then we had a va This started getting into color, so hang on, I remember the color bit at the top. We had a, a normal Three, which is just going to be our color. So you set this to be like a yellow. Set. But before that, we were. Well, uh, I'll go back alpha down. Okay. Yeah, I'll go back down in a moment. I just I remember that the top. Uh, uh, here's one thing you don't know. Uh, so you get the scene texture again, another scene texture. Oh, that was up here. Yes. 
Yeah. And, and it was post processing zero, I remember. Yes. That. Right. Uh, and. Uh, do you do the range again? No. No. You mask it, get the RGB values out. Oh, yes. Yeah, so that is exactly what I meant by range. Sorry. I mean, oh, you, I, I, no, no, ma range doesn't mean that. In my mind, I was thinking the RPG thing. Sorry, dude. I, uh, we, I was thinking the right thing, at least. Get the R out of it. Uh, add the B as well to the mask. Do we want the B? We want all three yes. colors, right? Yes. And then we say these colors are now going to be multiplied by this or add? Uh, no. Uh, aren't we going to lerp it? Uh, oh yes, that was it. It's like be... a switch thing. I remember now. Yes. So you had either to so either take this color or this color based mm -hmm. on a lerp, and the alpha was the. Hold on. So we either want to show the normal thing. Alpha is our mask. Or this, and we want to do it based on whether this is one or not. So if it's. Yeah, we can directly do that and. Uh... Not use any alpha parameters. Uh, not the lerps alpha. I mean the yeah uh, alpha in the mask. Yeah. So this should technically this should do something. But I I need to teach you how to enable the post processing oh, yeah, yeah. thing. So you need to add uh go A to add volume. Is it? No. Yeah, post process volume. Yeah, I lost it too. <laughs> yeah, there we are. Where did it go? Oh, oh it doesn't. It one. just goes into the scene. It fills the whole thing. It's not a uh, right. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh. Then instead of custom, search for blend. And uh, enable the, the top. Yeah, that one. Uh, so add an, another element there and choose as asset reference. Choose your material. Oh, whatever's on. Oh, the the one we the just material made. Material you created, yeah. Okay. Yep, that's it. Now it should work. Do you have to hmm. press play to see it or no? No, you should see it. Actually, it's weird. Uh, maybe you need to save it. <laughs> Hmm, actually, how did I, is it returning to zero? Oh, uh, what color did oh, you Oh, hold on, so I with my color isn't. What's wrong with your color? Um, you know, Does it's... it have a zero alpha, but the alpha? That's what I was thinking, it's just... No, it's it, not important. It doesn't even have an alpha value. Yes, 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 it shouldn't. <clears throat> uh, maybe the distance is not enough? <laughs> Can you oh, get yeah. closer to the object? Yeah, yeah, that's a fair point. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay, oh. okay. Yeah, there you go. Just at this range? Yeah. Why? <laughs> it works. That's what's important. No, it's not important. Uh, okay, so can you create a material instance and play with the yeah. thingy? Not from here. <laughs> uh, it's... it's already exposed, sorry. <laughs> We'll chuck that on our post processing. Yes. I've got two. Yeah, I created one by default, I guess. Oh, one was in my lighting. Get rid of that. Two. Uh, so you said to look at blend. And oh, you. I deleted the old one. <laughs> okay. Oh, the new one. What? Mm, first, choose assets reference. <laughs> what are it? <laughs> I'm fine. 
I know exactly what I'm doing. Okay, it works right now. I can see. So I didn't know if there was they were conflicting the post processing volumes. Yeah, probably. Unbound on the post processing volume, the volume has size and it will only show inside if you set it to unbound. Ah, yes, good sir, you are correct. This. The default is not that, and then it has a size. So when I added right. that tiny square, it must have all the square. Yeah, you said well, you said it was uh, containing all the scene. That's why I I trusted you. <laughs> Don't trust me. Okay. Um. Oh, yes. Uh, magic. Okay, so, so let's add the alpha as well uh, because I think it's important. Is it, so we see a bit of this still. Or is it so we it's it, it no, vibrates we, a bit as well, eh? We're seeing it uh fully solid opaque. Yeah. And not seeing the actual object in front of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so that's what this bit here does then is we take this and we multiply. Yeah, after the last multiply we add another multiply. Which is gonna be with a parameter line. here, which is gonna be our uh X ray Scale it. <laughs> <laughs> One to begin with. Pass that to there. Save. And see how we are confident with your words and use, using scalar, <laughs> <laughs> but not scalar. <laughs> scalar! Okay, where is our material? This? No, material instance? The material instance is in your. Project view, content browser. Yeah. Okay, enable the X ray <laughs> scaler. <laughs> oh, inverted. <laughs> ah, let's go. Devin, I have not seen you for a long time. How are you doing, beautiful? And hello, QPX1 as well. Thank you for saying. And uh, Apollyon, thanks for speaking up. And Luku, Laku, we have passed that one hour, three hour mark. Where's my medal? Oh, is it a missive? It is a missive, so... Oh, the... <laughs> yeah, but, but it's masked, so... Yeah, yeah but... Look what happened. Yeah. Uh, how does that happen when you do such a large number? I don't know. I don't care to know at the moment either. Okay, so that's cool. I think like 0. 0.75 would probably be decent. Mm, no, 0. 0.6. 6. Uh, maybe we could expose the color as well and uh, yeah, that's a fish overshoot app. that one instead. Uh, okay, no, overshoot this. Mm -hmm. So you could just add a multiplier and expose that out as well. Uh, convert that to the parameter uh, highlight color. And then we will get a multiplier, which will take this of our... Uh, that? Um, <laughs> can, sorry, language, Dan. Um, this, convert this to parameter 2, which will be our highlight color. Glove. Glove strength. Glow. <laughs> And then mark that in there. This by default should be one. Save. Everything. You have 255 points. What are you going to do with all those points? Okay. Enable the highlight color glow. I'm, I'm excited. Hang on. I like color. Oh, they should be in the same. Anyway. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> yeah, it basically just gets to white eventually rather than like glows out, I yeah. guess, right? <clears throat> That's okay. It's not a glow. But, um... <laughs> we just wished it to be. But, I mean, it's nice. We can now change the color, right? Nothing new there, but still. I like that though. Uh, I don't know why it's a bit vibratey. 
I don't know if that's just because it's playing yeah, or does it do no, it? No, no, it was like that on my end as well. I don't know. I, I, I don't care right now. <laughs> we just have to make a game that has potential for like, we'll make it about energy or something so it can vibrate like that. Uh, can you play with the distance as well? Uh, yes. Yes, I so, can. So we shall see uh, when it disappears. Uh, at the moment, I'm probably not very. Oh, what? Ooh. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. No. Wow. I thought it would cut out. Okay, so it's a scale. It's a di right. So this is a scalar based on distance. This is, and this is like, yeah. what color should it be? Its maximum. Uh, oh no. Yeah, well, well, I think with with the uh, other nodes he had in it, it was multiplying it by two and flooring it again. Uh, that way, he, he was having a uh, strict, like when you're far away, it just disappears kind of thing. It fade the further, yeah. So it fades the further you are away, right? Yes. I don't know. Does it? I think I. I want to say it does, but I don't know. <laughs> it does. Feels like it does, doesn't it? It does. It does. Uh, it could be an optical illusion brain. Uh, can you can you get X-ray scalar to one instead? Uh, maybe that way we'll see it better. Yeah, it's definitely getting more visible, isn't it? Yes. Uh, what if we set this to a hundred? Nice big thing. When we're 100 feet, it's invisible. That's the kind of. That's where we do that divide. So it's not just on or off, it's a division. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you could use an if instead and have it. Yeah, like, like on, permanently on, on, on off. off. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Oh, well, it's cool because we understand it now. That's... Yes. <laughs> I still don't like that vibration though. Yeah, I don't know why that happens to. Seems to only do it on the higher values. No, that's a light. It does it regardless. Yeah, well, that's fine. It's still nice though. I like that we've done that. Uh, so we can show that off later. Now we've got some more water to do. Let's go. Mm -mm 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 -mm. <laughs> it's cool. That's probably how they do the highlight the ed edge of the shape when you select yeah Something along those lines okay good work everyone everyone clap <laughs> <laughs>